Hello, this is Shay Jackson with Hype Math and Reading. In today's video, we will be reviewing for the 2022 Texas Star Math Test for third graders. Our concept is fractions review. This is part three. Remember third graders, believe you can and you will. We have our third grade star math and reading review workbooks available for purchase in our store. You can grab yours today by clicking the link in the description box. Do you need a math or reading tutor? We offer virtual one-on-one -on -one and group tutoring for second to eighth grade students. Parents, you can click the link in the description box to sign up for a free 30-minute consultation. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, click that notification bell, and smash the like button so that you will be alerted to new videos we upload and also spread the word about hype math and reading. We greatly appreciate your support. So let's dive into comparing fractions. One thing to remember third graders is that the alligator mouth always opens up to the largest number or the biggest number. So let's take a look at our examples. We have one eighth is less than three eighths. So our inequality sign shows the pointer at the smaller number and the wide mouth, the alligator mouth open up to three eighths. Even in our picture, we can see that one eighth is smaller or less than three eighths. Let's look at another example. Here we have five sixths is greater than one half. Now, even though our numerators and denominators are different, we can look at our pictures and we can see there are six equal blocks and there are, I'm sorry, there are five equal blocks and our denominator is six. And we also have one half. In looking at our blocks, yes, we can see that five sixths is greater than or bigger than one half. And where does that alligator mouth open up? Yes, to the five sixths. Here is another example. We have four eighths is equal to one half. Now, again, we have a different numerator and denominator, but let's look at our pictures. On the left-hand side, we have a circle that is divided into eight equal parts. Of those parts, four are shaded. That is where I get four eighths because the total parts is my denominator, eight, and my numerator is the shaded parts, four. Now, let's look to the right-hand side or the right circle. We have two parts, two total parts, two is my denominator, and we have one shaded part. And as we compare the two circles, we can see that they are equal to each other, and that is why four eighths is equal to one half. And one more example, we have seven tenths is greater than two fifths. So we have a rectangle. Let's look at the one on the left-hand side. We have 10 equal parts, and of that, seven are shaded. So seven is my numerator for the shaded part and parts, and the total parts is 10. That is my denominator. Looking at the rectangle on the right, we have five equal parts. That is my denominator, and of that, two of the parts are shaded. That is two fifths. So seven tenths is greater than two fifths. Let's look at question number 21. We have our third grade, just a friendly reminder, we have our third grade math review workbook. The link is in the description box. Number 21 says, Bailey and Dylan, or Dylan, each had pies that were the same size. Bailey ate one third of his pie. Dylan ate one fourth of his pie. Which statement is true? A, the boys ate the same amount of pie because both fractions have a numerator of one. B, Bailey ate more pie because each slice of a pie cut into three equal parts is larger than each slice of a pie cut into 
four equal parts. C. Dylan ate more pie because a denominator of four is larger than a denominator of three. And D. There is not enough information to determine who ate more pie. The first question we need to ask ourselves in order to solve this problem is, what are we looking for? We are looking for the fraction statement that is true about Bailey and Dylan. Now that we know what we're looking for, the next question we need to ask ourselves is, what information can help find the answer? The information that can help find the answer is that Bailey ate one third of his pie and you notice we have our little pie example with one third shaded on the left hand side and then on the right hand side Dylan ate one fourth of his pie we have a circle divided into four equal parts and only one part is shaded okay so on the left hand side the circle with the green the lime green shaded area that's one third that's Bailey's pie and then on the right hand side with the four equal parts and one part is shaded red that is Dylan pie one fourth this is the information that can help us find the answer so now that we know that how are we going to solve the problem well in order for us to solve this problem what we need to do is look at our fractions again when we have our pictures to help us and we're going to compare it to our answer choices and let's do that now so again we know that on the left hand side the pie that bailey ate is one third and on the right hand side is one fourth shaded that Dylan ate. Now, let's look at eight. The boys ate the same amount of pie because both fractions have the same numerator of one. Hmm. Now, in looking at the shaded area, does that seem like it's the same amount of pie? Because we did show an example when we were looking at some of the different ways we can compare fractions, what it looks like to have the same amount even though the numerator and denominator are different. So A doesn't seem to be correct. Even though the numerator is one, the shaded areas do not look like the same amount. All right, so let's look at B. Bailey ate more pie because each slice of pie cut into three equal parts is larger than each slice of pie cut into four equal parts. Well, in looking at our slices of pie, that seems to be correct. So B probably is our correct answer, but we're gonna go through all of the answer choices just to see what they say and to see if potentially we can get an understanding and maybe B may not be the best answer, but it may be, we're just gonna go through the answer choices. All right, C says, Dylan ate more pie because a denominator of four is larger than a denominator of three. Well, that doesn't seem to matter because again, in looking at our slices of pie, it actually looks like three the denominator of three, that is larger in the pie slices than four. So no to C. D, there is not enough information to, to determine who ate more pie. Well, that seems to be a wrong answer too, because even though we only had our fraction at first, we put pictures to it. And that's something that you can do third graders. If you're not sure, draw a circle, divide it evenly, and shade in the information you need to give you a visual or a picture so that you can clearly understand what you are being asked, okay? So we know the correct answer and it is B. Bailey ate more pie because each slice of a pie cut into three equal parts is larger than each slice of a pie cut into four equal parts. Way to go. Let's go to question number 22. The number lines model, model two different fractions. 
which statement is true. All right, so let's look at what we have here. We have two number lines. The top one has two hops and the bottom one has one hop, okay? Then let's count the number of lines between zero and one. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It takes eight total hops to get from zero to one, okay? Now let's look at our answer choices. We have F, one half is greater than one over one. G, two eighths is greater than one eighth. H, one eighth is equal to two eighths. And J, two eighths is less than one eighth. So to answer this question, we already know the most important question is, what are we looking for? Well, we're looking for the fraction statement that is true. Now that we know what we're looking for, the next question we need to ask ourselves is, what information can help find the answer? All right, the information that can help find the answer is, one, there are eight lines or eight hops between zero and one, so eight is the denominator, okay? And then number two, the, total, the top number line has two hops. That means my fraction is two eighths. How did you get two eighths, Miss Jackson? I'm glad you asked. So we know that eight is our denominator because it's eight total hops to get to one. That's the denominator. And then for the top number line, we have two hops. Two is our numerator. So for the bottom number line, it has one hop, so my fraction is one eighth. Again, because there are eight hops total to get from zero to one, and there's only one hop for the bottom number line, so my numerator is one. One eighth is my fraction for the bottom number line, and two eighths is my fraction for the top number line. Now that we have the information that can help us solve the problem, well, how are we gonna solve it? The way we need to solve this problem is to compare the number lines and fractions and also look at our answer choices. Okay, so again, we know that our top number line is two eighths and our bottom number line is one eighth. Now in looking at the number of hops for our top number line and our bottom number line, Let's look at our answer choices as well. Well, F says one half is greater than one over one. Well, that really doesn't have anything to do with this problem because we already know our denominator is eight. Okay, so if the answer choice for this problem has, does not have a num denominator of eight, it cannot be the right choice, all right? Now, the other thing we need to look at, because G, H, and J, they all have the denominators of eight. Now let's focus on our numerators, okay? And our number line. G says two eighths, we know that's our top number line, is greater than one eighth. So it's two hops greater than one hop? Hmm, seems to be. Let's look at H. One eighth is equal to two eighths. No, they don't seem to be equal to each other because they do not have the same number of hops. And then J says that two eighths, which is the top number line, is less than one eighth, which is the bottom one. No, that doesn't seem right either because actually the top number line has more hops. So what is our correct answer? It is G, two eighths, which is our top number line, is greater than one eighth, which is our bottom number line. Great job, third graders. Let's look at one more problem. There are four books on a shelf. In the model, the shaded books represent nonfiction books. Which expression represents the fraction of the books on the shelf that are nonfiction? Okay, so here we have our little picture of the book of shelf, 
not the book of shelves, <laughs> the books on the shelf. And we have one, two, three, four total books. So we already know that's our denominator, right? And then we have three shaded books and one unshaded book. And in our problem, it says that the shaded books equal nonfiction. So let's look at our answer choices. We have for A, one fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth. For B, we have one fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth. C, we have one third plus one third plus one third. And D, we have three over one plus three over one plus three over one. All right, to answer this question, the first thing we need to ask ourselves is what? Yes, what are we looking for? We are looking for the expression representing the fraction of books on the shelf that are nonfiction. Okay, now that we know what we're looking for, what information can help us find the answer? That's a very good question too. So number one, we know that there are four books on the shelf. So four is the denominator, okay? So four is the denominator. And like we talked about in that last problem, if we see an answer choice like for this problem and four is not the denominator, we know those answers are not correct because four is our denominator, okay? Then number two, there are three shaded nonfiction books. So our fraction is three fourths because three represents our numerator for the shaded books that are nonfiction. Okay. Those are the two pieces of information that can help us solve this problem. So how do we solve the problem? Well, in order for us to solve this problem, we need to look for the answer choice that equals three fourths, okay? The first thing we said we need to do is ignore, do not look at the answer choices, or we can even cross them out. The answer choices that do not have four in the denominator, that is C and D. We know that C and D cannot be correct answers because our denominator is four, which represents the total number of books on the shelf. All right, so all we need to do is look at A and B. When you have a denominator that's the same, all you need to do is look at the numerator. So for A, we have one plus one plus one plus one. That is four in the numerator, four in the denominator. For B, we have one, looking at adding our numerators together, one plus one plus one, that is three. So the answer is three fourths. So what is our correct answer? Yes, it is B. One fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth is equal to three fourths. And that's what represents the nonfiction books that are shaded on our bookshelf. Well, that is it third graders. We have finished part three of our fractions review. Now, if you need a math or reading tutor, parents can sign up by clicking the link to receive a free 30 minute consultation and we have our third grade math and reading review workbooks available for purchase in our store. The link is in the description box as well. This is Shay Jackson with Hype Math and Reading. I will talk to you later.